In this video, I'm going to share with you 5 essential tips that will help you unleash the full potential of the PowerPoint SlideZoom feature. SlideZooms enable you to create interactive, dynamic and engaging presentations by allowing you to zoom into specific slides or sections of your presentation. This way you can break out from the usual linear flow and add a new zoom dimension to your presentations. Hello my friends, it's one skill and I'll help you become a PowerPoint Pro. So let me share with you 5 essential tips that will make you an expert in using PowerPoint slide zooms. Plus at the end of this video I'll share with you one extra tip that will take your slide zoom skills to the next level. So let's go. Ok my friends, so first of all let me show you how you can insert slide zooms into your presentation. So there are basically two ways of how you can insert a slide zoom. First of all, you can go into the Insert tab, click on the Zoom button and click on Slide Zoom. And now in this window, you will see all of the slides that exist in your presentation. So now just pick any slide that you wish and click Insert to insert a Slide Zoom. And Skadoosh, you have inserted your first Slide Zoom. Congratulations! Now let's just move it a bit to the left side and now let me show you a second method. So you can just use this slide list that you have here on the left side. And once you find a slide that you like, just grab it, drag it and drop it into your slide. And this way you can as well create a slide zoom. That's awesome. And now let's just turn on the slide guys for a quick second. This way we can easily see where is the center of the slide. And now let me just quickly align these slide zooms so that everything is looking well balanced. And as you can see both of these slide zooms have a little thin line around them. And that's because PowerPoint by default always has a line to all of these slide zooms. So let's just select both of these slide zooms. Let's go to zoom, zoom border and let's choose no outline. This way I think these slide zooms are looking much better. And now one more thing that I like to do to all of my slide zooms is to add rounded corners to them. So let's make sure that both of these slide zooms are selected and let's apply this style called reflected rounded rectangle to both of them. And skadoosh, now these slide zooms have rounded corners and reflections and by the way if you would like to disable those reflections you can just jump into the format pane, let's go into the reflections and let's just choose none. I think those rounded corners are enough, that's awesome. Ok my friends, and now let's just play the presentation and let's see what happens. So let's just click on any of these slide zooms, for example this one, and let's see what happens. So skadoosh, as you can see we are zooming in, that's beautiful. And let's see what happens when we click one more time, we just jump into the next slide. So let me show you how we can actually return to the previous slide or to the home slide. And to do that we need to use this feature which is called return to zoom. So let's just click on this slide zoom. Ok, now let's go into the zoom tab. And over here let's make sure that we check the check mark next to return to zoom and let's make sure that we do that for both of the slides and this will enable us to zoom back after we zoom in. So let's check it out on the full screen once again. So let's just click on the slide zoom, we zoom in, that's beautiful. And on the second click we zoom back to the home slide. That's awesome, that's the power of return to zoom feature. So whenever you wish to zoom back to your previous slide or to your home slide, make sure that you activate the return to zoom checkbox. Ok my friends, so next you have probably noticed that besides slide zooms we have two more types of zooms in PowerPoint. If we go into insert, click on zoom, over here we can see summary zooms, section zooms and slide zooms. And first of all it's important to understand that slide zooms are used for single slides. As you can see there is a little number at the bottom right corner of the slide zoom, it shows 9 and it shows 12 on this one. And all it means that we're going to zoom into a single slide and zoom back. And in case you'd like to zoom in, go through a couple of slides and only then zoom back. In that case you would have to use a section zoom. And make sure that you have at least one section in your presentation because otherwise you won't be able to insert section zooms. And let me just collapse all of these sections on the left side. As you can see we have a couple of sections that we can expand or collapse. So just make sure you have at least a couple of sections that you can use. So now let's get back to our slide and let's try inserting a section zoom and this time let's just click on section zoom and now let's just pick any section that we like. So for example let's just go to infographics and let's just click on infographics section and let's click insert. And here we go a section zoom has been inserted, that's beautiful. Let's just align it to the middle of the slide. And now we can see numbers from 13 to 15 which means that we're going to zoom into a couple of slides, go through them and only then zoom back. And now once again let's remove that zoom border and let's add those beautiful rounded corners. And let's disable the reflection. Ok so return to zoom option is activated for the section zoom, that's beautiful and now let's just check it out on the full screen. And once again let's just first click on a slide zoom that will zoom us into a single slide and on a second click we will zoom back. And now let's click on a section zoom, so here is the first slide in the section, that's beautiful. And on a second click we just transition to the next slide, that's beautiful. 
And now we transition to the last slide in this section. And after this, we zoom back. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Ok my friends, and next let's try inserting a summary zoom. So a summary zoom should basically collect all of these sections that we have in our presentation and create section zooms for all of those uh, sections. So this should be like a navigational dashboard that we can use to navigate different sections of our presentation. And at the same time PowerPoint should insert a new section called summary section and insert all of those section zooms over there. So let's just click insert and see what happens. And skadoosh we get a grid of section zooms that can take us to any section in our presentation. That's awesome. And PowerPoint has automatically added a new section called summary section so that's beautiful. And let me just apply this beautiful slide design to this summary section slide so that we have the same style as the rest of the slides. And by the way if you wish you can resize the width of your summary zoom and this way you can have two columns or four columns depending on the look that you're going for. And next let's make sure that the summary zoom is nicely aligned to the center of the slide. And next let me quickly insert a slide title and let's just type in summary zoom. And once again let's select all of those beautiful section zooms, let's remove the zoom border and let's add those beautiful rounded corners and I'll turn off the reflections as well. Ok and here we have a nice looking summary zoom and as you can see some of those sections have just a single slide but some of those sections have a couple of slides. So let's just give it a try and let's see how this summary zoom works. And by the way these slides are absolutely free for my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course students. I'll attach these slides to chapter 12 which is all about slide zoom animations. Ok so the summary zoom is working as expected and each time we reach the end of a section we just zoom back to the summary slide. That's awesome. Ok my friends so whenever you'd like to have a bird's eye view of your whole presentation use summary zooms. Just make sure you have at least a couple of sections in your presentation. And now let's move to tip number 4 which is all about making your slide zoom background transparent. So once you click on a slide zoom you can go into the zoom tab and just click on this button zoom background and as you can see the background of a slide zoom will become transparent. And let's activate the transparent zoom background for the second slide zoom as well. And if instead of a transparent background you're getting a white background for your slide zooms, make sure that the home slide is actually using a picture as its fill or any kind of solid or gradient fill and then everything should be ok. So now let's just test it out and let's see how it looks like on the full screen. And as you can see since the slide zoom background is transparent, this slide is basically using the background from the home slide. And this way you can create a beautiful depth effect for your slides. It looks like as if everything is happening on the same canvas but on different zoom levels. Ok my friends and next let me show you how you can create custom thumbnails for your slide zooms. And as you have probably noticed once you insert a slide zoom all of the content of that slide is visible right away. And it doesn't matter if you have some entrance animations on your slide, all of the content will be visible right away. And let's say you don't want to reveal all of the slide content right away, in that case you can set a custom image or thumbnail for your slide zooms. Select any slide zoom, click on change image and then insert any image that you wish. So usually when people are inserting slide zooms into PowerPoint they have a setup that looks like this. They have some circles with connecting lines, some icons in those circles and some subtitles below the circles. So let's see what happens if we insert a couple of slide zooms over these circles. And now let's just resize all of these slide zooms so that they nicely fit inside of those circles. And obviously as you can see all of these slide zooms are covering up those icons that we have inside of those circles. So this is a good situation for using custom thumbnails for all of these slide zooms. And before we continue let's just make sure that all of these slide zooms have the return to zoom option activated so that we can zoom in into them and zoom back. And if you wish you can change the zoom transition duration as well but I'll just leave it at 1 second. And now let's create a custom thumbnail for all of our slide zooms and let's create a fully transparent thumbnail so that we can see those icons behind. And to create a transparent thumbnail let's just insert a rectangle. Let's make sure it has a solid fill and let's just add a 100% transparency so that the rectangle becomes transparent. And now let's just right click on it and let's choose save as picture. And now let's make sure that we save this uh, rectangle as a PNG image because PNG images can save the transparency information and this is what we want. Let's just hit save. Now we can delete this transparent rectangle, we don't need it anymore. And now let's just select this first slide zoom, let's go into zoom tab. Let's click on the change image button and now we can select that transparent image. And skadoosh my friends now this slide zoom is absolutely transparent. We can see that icon behind and the slide zoom is still fully functional. 
So now let's repeat the same steps for the rest of these light zooms so that all of these guys are transparent. And now let's take a look on the full screen and as you can see all of the icons are fully visible. And by the way I have added a little growth shrink animation to all of those icons. And as you can see once we click on those invisible slide zooms they are working perfectly. We're zooming in and on a second click we zoom back. Super duper awesome. So just keep in mind that you can always set custom thumbnails or images for your slide zooms. And this way you will show everything that you have on your slides right away. And now my friends let me share with you that bonus tip that I have promised you in the beginning of this video. And it's all about using animation triggers with your slide zooms. And on this slide I have actually inserted four section zooms and section zooms work perfectly with animation triggers as well. And in the center of the slide we have four buttons that we can use to open up those section zooms or close them. And this way with the help of the animation triggers you can add a whole new level of interactivity to your presentations. That's super duper awesome. So I know it's really fun to just keep on clicking on those buttons but let's actually test out this section zoom. So let's just click on it. And here we get the first slide of this section, after that we go into the second slide, here comes the third slide and after the last slide we should come back or zoom back to the home slide. And here it is, everything is working as expected. And now let me quickly go through the rest of these section zooms just to make sure that everything is working smooth as butter. Okay so it seems that everything is working as expected, once we reach the last slide of any section we're zooming back to the home slide. That's super duper awesome. Ok my friends, so now let me show you how you can create those clickable buttons and how you can trigger those section zooms. So let me show you an example with this first section zoom here at the top left corner of the slide. And once you know how you can create one of those clickable buttons, you'll know how you can create the rest of them as well. And now let me delete the rest of these section zooms, we'll be working just with this one. And now let's just take a look at the selection pane and let's see what is the name of this section zoom, it's called section zoom 19. And this button is called button 1. Ok so let's make sure that the section zoom is selected, let's open up the animation pane and now let's start adding some animations and first of all let's go to more entrance animations and let's look for basic zoom, here it is, let's click OK. And let me check what was the duration of this animation in my previous slide, I think it was 0.7 seconds, yes it is, so let's use the same duration. And now with the basic zoom animation it looks like as if this section zoom is zooming from its own center. And we would like this section zoom to zoom from those buttons over here. So for that we'll have to add one more animation and this time let's add a motion path line animation. And let's just drag this red bubble to the center of these uh, buttons, ok? Let's make sure it's somewhere in the center. And at the same time let's make sure that we reverse this motion path because we would like the starting point to be where those buttons are and the ending point of this animation to be where the uh, section zoom currently is, ok? And by the way if some of these PowerPoint animation concepts are new to you or you would like to master PowerPoint animations, in that case I would definitely recommend my PowerPoint animation mastery course, link is in the video description. And now let's just keep on going. So let's make sure that the motion path line animation has the same duration, 0.7 seconds and let's add a maximum smooth end to it. And now let's select all of these buttons and let's bring them to front, this way the section zoom will stay one layer below and this way we'll achieve the animation that we're going for. And currently these two animations are triggered by a mouse click and we'd like this button to be the trigger of the animations. So once again let's check its name, it's called button 1. And now let's select both of the animations in the animation pane, let's click on trigger and let's choose button 1. And this way we have set this button to be the trigger of the section zoom animations, that's awesome. And by the way we can animate this button as well, so let's just add a growth shrink animation to this guy as well and let's just drag this growth shrink animation into the trigger button 1 group. And now let's just set the basic zoom animation to start with previous because we just want a single click for all of these animations to happen. And now for the button growth shrink animation duration let's use a duration of 0.2 seconds, of course you can use any duration that you wish. And now in the effect options let's use 90% for the shrink percentage and we can have a 0.1 second smooth start and smooth end, ok. And let's make sure that autoverse is enabled. And with this growth shrink animation we'll create an effect as if the button is being pressed, so let's check it out. Let's click on the button and skadoosh the section zoom comes out. And at the same time we're getting that button press animation, that's beautiful. 
However, currently we can only open up the section zoom by using this button, so let me show you how we can close the section zoom by using the same button as well. Let's make sure that the section zoom is selected, let's go to add animation, let's go to more exit animations and let's choose basic zoom. And once again, let's make sure that this animation is in the same trigger group button 1, ok? And now let's add a second group shrink animation to this button because we'd like to have this pressing effect to be happening on opening of the section zoom and on closing of the section zoom. So that's why we need to have two group shrink animations. And let's use the same group shrink settings as before, 90% for the shrink percentage and 0.1 seconds for smooth start smooth end and auto reverse enabled. And now let's add a second motion path animation to this section zoom because we would like this section zoom to zoom out but at the same time move into the direction of those buttons. So let's just grab that red bubble of the second motion path line animation and let's move it somewhere where the center of those buttons is. And we don't have to reverse the motion path line animation this time because we actually want this ending position to be where those buttons are. And once again, if some of these PowerPoint animation concepts sound too complicated, then I definitely recommend my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course, where we start with PowerPoint Animation Fundamentals, then take on more challenging projects until you become a PowerPoint Animation Pro. And now my friends, let's check out this button. As you can see on the first click, we open up that section zoom, and on the second click, we close it. And of course, we can zoom in, check out all of the slides in that section, and after the last slide in that section, we zoom back to the home slide. And now that you know how to create a single button, you can create the rest of the buttons in the same way as well, or as many buttons as you need in your presentation. Congratulations my friends, now you know all of the 5 slide zoom tips and one extra tip that will make you unstoppable PowerPoint slide zoom creator. And as I mentioned before, all of these slides are absolutely free for my PowerPoint Animation Mastery course students, link is in the video description. And by the way, I have recently added a slide zoom animation chapter to my PowerPoint animation course, where I go into more detail how to create these beautiful spinning gear slide zooms, morph animated slide zooms and infinite zooms. And if you're interested, there is a coupon code OneSkill100 that will save you $100. That is valid until the 1st of November, so not too many days left, make sure you grab it while you can. And next, if you'd like to learn how you can use the Morph Transition, one of the most powerful PowerPoint tools that you have effectively, then watch this video. I'll see you there.